In our Sunday School lesson this week, we'll see that Jesus says that He is the resurrection and the life. The foundation of our faith, it is built on Jesus Christ. It is built on the evidence of God, that is, the giving of the only begotten Son, Jesus, that is, His witness of the heavenly kingdom, that is, His death and His resurrection. We find that in the resurrection of Christ, there is confirmation that Jesus certainly was God in the flesh. And through our faith in the resurrection of Christ, we find life. That is not life physically in this world, that is life eternal. Our lesson today takes a look at Jesus arriving in Bethany after the passing away of Lazarus. We are told that Jesus had arrived when Lazarus had been in the tomb for four days. Scripture shows us that days earlier, Jesus had purposefully delayed going to Bethany when he had received word of Lazarus being near to death. When he had received word about Lazarus' condition, Jesus, he said to the disciples, his sickness, it is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. We're then told in Scripture that Jesus, he stayed where he was for two days before he went to Judea. Now, to be clear, Jesus, he knew very well that Lazarus was dying as he had made it very clear to the disciples. So the question that will be raised is, why did Jesus delay? Why did he delay going to Bethany to prevent the death of Lazarus? As he had said earlier, Lazarus's sickness was not unto death. It wasn't going to be a permanent physical death. As we know, Jesus, he was going to go on and raise Lazarus from the dead. Jesus said that Lazarus' sickness was for the glory of God, that the Son may be glorified through it. We have to remember that Jesus was in the world for a reason. Jesus was in the world for the purpose of turning souls away from sin and to the Lord. As you have heard me say before, the Lord, he made an everlasting covenant with mankind. He promised us that we will dwell with him eternally should we have faith in him. And so we find through the sickness of Lazarus, we find through his eventual death that the Lord's divine will was at work. The Lord, he desired to turn people to him. And so the Lord used the sickness of Lazarus. He used the death of Lazarus to turn those away from the way in which they were going to show his awesome power so that they could trust in, believe in and have faith in that awesome power. Now, scripture shows us that there would certainly be some there in Bethany to witness the work of Christ and then believe in his work. Bethany, I want you to understand that scripture shows us it was just a couple of miles away from Jerusalem. And so quite a few had journeyed to be there with Martha and Mary to console them, to comfort them in their time of grieving. Now, Martha and Mary, they had no idea that their brother's death was part of the Lord's divine will. And may I suggest to you that at that moment, neither couldn't have cared less about God's divine will. When Martha heard that Jesus had arrived, she went to him and she essentially asked him, where were you? She said to Jesus, had you been here, my brother would not have died. Now, again, there certainly was a great deal of truth behind that statement. Had Jesus been there, Lazarus, he would have never tasted death. So that statement from Martha, it was the exact reason why Jesus delayed going to Bethany in the first place. There could have been questions about whether or not Lazarus was really dead had Jesus been there to prevent his death. So. With Lazarus being in the tomb for four days, he was dead as a doorknob. There will be no questioning whether or not Lazarus was really dead when Jesus, as we know, would go on to raise Lazarus from the dead. So Jesus, he confidently said to Martha, your brother will rise again. Now we know that Jesus, he was going to Bethany to raise Lazarus from the dead. Martha, on the other hand, had no idea and you'll notice throughout this passage of scripture that Martha never asked Jesus to raise her brother from the dead. In fact, her response is a sign that she wasn't even thinking of Lazarus being raised in that very moment. From her response, 
Martha believed in what she had always learned about the resurrection. And dare I say, she had probably heard that statement quite a few times already over those four days. So Martha, I believe, she just was frustrated in that moment in time. And I believe that she just wanted to vent at that moment in time. That's something that we as believers, we often do when the Lord hasn't moved as we wished he would move, as we desire for him to move. You know, we desire for the Lord to move like this. We want him to move quickly. And when we haven't received our blessing, when we feel that we haven't received our blessing, guess what we do? We go to God and we vent to him. Why aren't you moving as fast as we wish that you would move? Why haven't you given us what we have prayed for or things that we would vent in frustration to the Lord? I don't want us to question Martha's faith. I believe that she and her sister Mary were both very faithful women. The fact that she believed that had Jesus been there, that he would have prevented Lazarus' death shows that she believed in the power of Jesus. So again, I believe that she was frustrated and Jesus was there to console her. But again, we know that the Lord's divine will was at work. He had a job that he came there to do. So Jesus said to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Jesus, I want you to understand, was expressing there in the 25th and the 26th verse, he was expressing to Martha that there was a difference in him speaking about the resurrection than anybody else. Jesus, I want you to understand, he is the authority over the resurrection. As we saw last week in our lesson, Jesus is the authority over who will be saved. So he asked her, do you believe in my authority? Do you believe in other words, my word? Now this again, it is a major question for all of us in the world today. I believe in the Lord. I believe in his authority. I believe that he gave the world his only begotten son. And I preach of the only begotten son. I preach of the sovereign God as well. However, I want to make it clear here. I am not the authority of the Lord. I do not stand over him. I am simply a messenger. That is something that we as messengers of the Lord, we must come to understand. And then all of those who hear the messengers, they must also come to understand the same thing as well. There are many people who are in the world today who don't have faith in the Lord because of the messenger. And so again, we must understand today that none of us have authority over the Lord. The Lord is the one who is still in charge. He has all power in his hand. He has all authority. And so if you're going to believe in someone, you don't have to believe in me or another messenger. Look beyond me, look beyond the other messengers, look to the Lord, have faith, put your trust in and lean on the Lord. So it was in this moment that Martha looked beyond the words and saw Christ for who he was, the savior of the world. It was in these moments where Martha's frustration, it went away. We find that she had been consoled by Christ and in being consoled by Christ, she was being uplifted. This is how the Lord consoles us today when we are frustrated. And so we find again in our lesson today that Jesus would go on to move to make new believers of those who had not yet believed in him by going forth and raising Lazarus from the dead. Jesus, he is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. He is the resurrection. So again, I say to you today, we have learned here today that Jesus is the authority. We have to look beyond the messengers we have to put our faith not in man. We must put our faith in the only begotten son. When we can look beyond the flesh, when we can see Jesus Christ, then that is when we will find salvation. That is when we find mercy. That is when we find forgiveness from the Lord. And then we will be able to inherit the kingdom of God. So again, I encourage you today, look beyond the flesh look to the Lord. And again, when you look to the Lord, you will find life.